Hello fellow Aussians, I'm the Louisiana Quadling and welcome to my channel. We're on a different side of the room today. Welcome to my Oz library. Today, we're going to be discussing the earliest edition of The Wizard of Oz that was in my house when I was growing up as a kid, and that was the 1944 edition. And coincidentally, and I did not plan this one out, it's going to be L. Frank Baum's birthday on the day that this video goes out. So, happy birthday, Mr. Baum. Now, the 1944 edition. What sets this edition apart from other editions of The Wizard of Oz is the illustrations. Here, they're done by Miss Evelyn Kopelman. Bob's Merrill, the publisher at the time, wanted to update The Wizard of Oz, and they commissioned Miss Kopelman to do the illustrations. The original edition features eight color plates and numerous textural inserted black and white illustrations. The dust jacket features a ninth color illustration of the four characters on the yellow brick road. Her illustrations, according to the book, were influenced by W.W. W. Dinslow's original ones. But you can see that she was also influenced by a certain film that was released five years before, MGM's The Wizard of Oz. You can clearly see this in her depiction of the Wicked Witch, which is shown with green skin, something the MGM film invented. But her choice of which scene she depicted to paint for the color plates in this edition does show she was heavily influenced by Denslow's originals. Take a closer look at these five plates. The Rescue of the Tin Woodman, Dorothy and the Field Mice, Dorothy and the Winged Monkeys, the discovery of Oz the Terrible, and lastly, Glinda, the Good Witch of the South. Getting back to my earliest copy from my childhood, this is not a first edition, but is a later edition that was published probably around the late 40s, I would say. This was my grandmother's book, and this is at least what the back of the book looks like, because the front... Well, it's not here. In fact, um, almost the entirety of the first chapter is gone. There is literally only two pages of that first chapter still here. And the rest of the book, well, yeah, it, it, it was well-loved, people. It was well-loved and it was well read. Identifying a first edition is actually pretty simple. There are three different things that you can look out for. The first of these is the cloth binding on the book. The original edition featured green cloth. Another easy indicator is the color plates themselves. In later editions, like this one, a couple of the plates are reversed. There is also a misprint on page 193 the word tremendous is misspelled. It is missing the first E. So if you come across one of these books, keep your eye out for those things. Now this book did come in a dust jacket and I do have one of those that I can show you. This is the original dust jacket for the Evelyn Culpelman edition. And it features that wonderful ninth color illustration on the front here. And on the back, it features Dorothy and the Winged Monkeys. Now, this book is a slightly later edition than my grandmother's. If we remove the dust jacket, I can show you. This book features a navy cloth with red wrapping around the spine. and it's the exact same contents as my grandmother's book. Something that might seem a little bit odd about this book versus other books that include color plates is that you would think the first edition would include all of Evelyn Kopelman's illustrations. And their really odd thing is, it actually doesn't. Yeah, I bet you weren't expecting to hear that one. Grosset and Dunlip in 1956 
got permission from Bob's Merrill to use Evelyn Copelman's illustrations for their Junior Library edition, which is right here. And this edition features new illustrations that Miss Copelman did for Grosset and Dunlop. Miss Copelman revised and redrew her original black and white illustrations for this edition, as well as new color illustrations. This book features 10 color plates versus the original eight. The cover features one of the new illustrations, and this is also included adjacent to the cover page. All previous editions had no color plate included here. This edition also has illustrated endpapers. The previous editions had blank endpapers. And the illustration that was originally on that dust jacket is now included in the book. All of the plates in this edition are portrait styled. The previous landscape styled plates have been cropped, like the poppy field and discovering of Oz the Terrible, and made portrait styled instead. A later edition by the same publisher is this one, the 1978 edition. And with this one, we have the return of a dust jacket. This time, it features the end paper cover art on the front, which wraps around to the spine. The back is green. Removing the dust jacket, the book features an interesting design of emerald cities, has a green spine, and features that same design on the back. This edition fixes some of those portrait-styled color plates and changes them back to being landscape, like the poppy field scene. Moving even further along, in 1991, Grosset and Dunlip reissued The Wizard of Oz again. And this, unfortunately, is where the downgrading begins. This edition omits five of Evelyn Copelman's color plates. And, gosh, that stinks. Anyways, the cover is very nice. It features the same end papers cover art, which this time wraps completely around the book. And has that gold embossed The Wizard of Oz. I hope that comes up on the camera. And the last edition that I have is this 1994 edition, which features new cover art that is not done by Ms. Copelman. It is done by an uncredited artist. The contents of this book are exactly identical to the 1991 edition. Now, if you were to pick up a copy of Evelyn Copelman's illustrated version of The Wizard of Oz, which one should you get? Should you get that original version that has the lovely dust jacket, or should you get one of the later editions that has more color illustrations? Well, I would go for those later editions, as they have more content, and I do realize that you are missing out on those original black and white illustrations that she did for the 1944 edition, but honestly, those color illustrations are really charming, and you really are missing out not having the end paper artwork and the other artwork. It's just, it's a really nice addition. So I would recommend the 1956 or the 1978 edition. What book edition of The Wizard of Oz did you have growing up? Comment down below. And if you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up comment down below, and subscribe. New videos are posted every two weeks. And if that doesn't satisfy your appetite for Oz, follow the link in the description to ozclub.org and join the International Wizard of Oz Club. Until next time, bye y'all.